we're here I'm, uh, with my new friend Gary Jobson. We're down at the Bitter End Yacht Club. We got this whole fleet of great Chinos behind us. And Gary, I just kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about, uh, well, you know, the whole presentation last night was so encapsulating. It went all the way back to the very beginnings for you, right up to what you're doing now. And I was just curious, um, as you look back, like, how did you get involved with all this? How did it all start for you? Well, I grew up in Barnica Bay, New Jersey. Started right. sailing at a very young age, six years old, and for me it was a summertime activity. But something about the age of 12 clicked. Yeah. That this would be my sport, my life's mission. Yeah. I've been at it ever since, and it's been quite a ride. You never quite know what's going to happen. I did have a journalism background. I was the uh, uh, editor of my high school newspaper, the editor of oh, my okay. college yeah. newspaper, and, uh, and I was teaching sailing. Right. So I kind of had that writing, thinking, uh, speaking early in my career, yep. which certainly helped me out when I got a tryout for ESPN way back in 1985. And I've been which, doing which still doesn't, you know, for us older guys, it doesn't seem that long ago. Well, you know, the 80s doesn't seem long ago. The 50s seem long ago. The 60s seem long ago. Uh, the 50s was long ago. Yeah. And the 60s <laughs> is getting to be long ago. But anyway, you know, I my mission in life is to uh, help people enjoy the sport of sailing and get people enthused about it. And, over the years, I've kind of migrated from being very technical and all racing oriented to more enjoyable. And I do like cruising a lot. I've done some very ambitious expeditions to the Arctic, to yep. the Antarctic, around yep. Cape Horn, crossing oceans. But I'll tell you, I had a great day yesterday. I was on the Genoa 64 footer. We started out at Norman Island. It was about a four hour sail or yep. so, all the way up to the bitter end, blowing anywhere from 14 to 25 knots, I think was the top. Yeah. It was just wonderful. And it was great fun, not just steering the boat and being out there, but just watching the other nine people on the boat, just getting into this nice mellow trance and right. into it. And I tried to make it fun, you know, well, let's get that boat, we're gonna pass this guy. Exactly. Gonna... And there was a boat that was racing alongside us, and they had their engine running the whole time. Exactly. They wanted to stay up with us, taking pictures, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I thought that was kind of fun, but it gave me something to shoot for, because we, of course, did not use our engine. Right, 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 right. And I'm curious, uh, you know, one thing we talked about a little bit uh, ago at breakfast was just, you know, working with Ted Turner. And, and what what uh, influence do you think that he had on your life that your paths would have crossed when they did? And then you went on to do the Fastnet race and the America's Cup races. And of course, a guy like him that went on to start CNN. And what, what was that like? And what was that? What do you think that, that meant for you to hook up with that guy? First of all, Paul, Ted is still a very good friend to this day. Yeah. Ted's a very dynamic guy and a visionary and a hard worker and right. a little eccentric as I am, but he's also a genius. Yeah. I got I met him when I was 22 years old at a thingy regatta, which I did well in, and he was a little bit behind me. And he right. said, you know, we got to sail together one of these days. And anyway, I got to sail with him uh, all over the world. I did two America's Cup campaigns and we won a lot of races. Yeah. And, and he, he made a little deal with me. He said, you know, you're gonna help me sail better. You don't know that, but you will do well and you're gonna sail better. And in return, let me help you with your business career. And that was a pretty good exchange, you know, because yeah. I didn't know anything about it. And had it. you planned to make sailing yes, a I, business I, career? Yes, and at the time it was very uncool to be a professional sailor. You might recall in the sure. 1960s and 70s, you yeah. did not get paid to sail. Right. So I had to make money doing other things by doing lectures and giving clinics and writing books. So I'm 19 years old. And uh, I'm getting ready for the 420 Nationals that have co that's coming to Barnica Bay, New Jersey. Anybody here from New Jersey? Hey. All right, let's see, we stick up for each other. Home of the Sopranos, Chris Christie. I mean, there's no end to it. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help myself. Anyway, the 420 Nationals are coming up. I'm 19 years old, and I've been practicing for a week. I never sailed a 420. And two days before the regatta, a friend of mine who just finished his freshman year in college says to me, hey, I'm driving an ice cream truck this summer. There's a rock concert coming up. Why don't you come with me and we'll make a fortune selling ice cream and we'll get to hear the music. Well, that was quite tempting. So I went to my father and said, Dad, what do you think? And he said, look, you can go to a rock concert any weekend of your life. But the 420 Nationals, he suggested, only comes to Farnicut Bay once in a lifetime. So I sailed the 420 Nationals, finishing, I think, 18th or something, and as it turned out, ended up missing Woodstock. So you know what I mean? Dave's 
I think my father knew what he was talking about. Would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> and then when ESPN covered the America's Cup in 1983, one race, yeah. and I was doing some commentary for ABC, I thought, you know, there's a real future here with this television. So I got a chance to try out, and because I'd done all these lectures, that I was prepared. Yeah, you and, felt comfortable in front of the camera yeah, and speaking and, and, and explaining things in a short period of time. So I'm with this group in Rio de Janeiro three weeks ago. And it's Saturday night, three weeks ago, and I'm having dinner with these people, and collectively the group comes from, you ready? Turkey, Greece, England, Italy, United States, Chile, Uruguay, Argentina, Brazil, New Zealand, Australia, and China. That's the group around the table. And the head guy from Italy goes around to make a toast, and he goes to each one of us and says something nice about everybody, and he finally comes to me, and he says, Gary, you know, we admire your sailing, thank you for being here, but I do have a question. Is this man Donald Trump really gonna be your president? <laughs> And to answer your first question, though, I mean, Ted was there as an advisor and guidance, and as I'm doing a deal with ESPN, Ted, which I'd be asking and which I know about, and right. Ted would give me some, I mean, he was dealing with stuff all along the way. And to be with Ted during a time that he's creating CNN, I remember one time he shows up on my little tiny condo in Annapolis. He says, Jobson, buy some of our stock, because I figured out how to become a billionaire. Really, a billionaire? I'm just glad to pay my Visa card. Here. Right, right. And. Uh, he says, yeah, I'm going to put uh, news on 24 hours a day and people are going to watch and I'm buying up old movies and people are going to watch. I got the sports team, the Atlanta Braves, and he said, you know, I really think I'm going to make this work and my goodness, did he make it He really work. made it work, yeah. He changed the world in a lot of ways. You know, he, the fact that he was broadcasting news 24 hours a day with the Gulf War, for example, he was Time Magazine's yeah. Man of the yeah. Year. Yeah. Uh, and just the fact that uh, people had access to news, I mean, I think the... The wall in Berlin came down partly because people knew about right, it. Right, right. In the past, nobody yeah. knew what was going on. Yeah. And uh, now that you're uh, a more senior guy and you have three daughters and they're married and you said you have grandchildren now, right. and as you kind of look back, what do you think, uh, whether it be sailing or not sailing, do you, have a, do you have a couple of favorite achievements that you're most proud of? Well, certainly I can look back and uh, having won a few big events in my career right. is very satisfying. I've lost a bunch of big events too, so I've, I've seen both sides of it. And today I don't get too excited when I win or too sad when I lose. I just like being out there. I think one of the achievements that I'm most proud of is I became a volunteer with something called the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Right. And uh, Ted Root of Cruising World and Sailing World Magazine was part of that. And I came up with suggestions, we could do these regattas all over and raise money for cancer research. Right. Oh, what a great idea, why don't you become a chairman? I said, I'll give you three years. That was 24 years ago, I'm still at it. Uh, in the past year, we passed the $54 million mark. That's amazing. And uh, the ironic twist of fate for me is 10 years after getting involved, I myself was diagnosed with a blood cancer lymphoma. So I had a two year battle, which I can assure you is very tough. Yes. But it, it tells you that when you help other people out, like I try to do with the Leukemia Society, yeah. In the end, the person that might be helped out the most is you. And I was a recipient of all that money that we spent research for, yeah, so I could amazing. be here with you today. Yeah. Well, I resolved at the time that if I was uh, somehow, some way able to get out of the jam, that I would try to be a little more philanthropic and helpful to the others. And, yeah. You know, I'm uh, on the board of Anne Arundel Medical Center and continue with the Leukemia Society. And yeah. I serve on a college board. and. So I, I work at, hard at being helpful, often outside of the sport of sailing, as well as inside. So, so I have one last question, which uh, I don't know how I'd answer it myself, but uh, I'm curious. I, I asked you about achievements. What do you think your biggest challenge is, what have been, your biggest challenge? Well, certainly overcoming cancer has been a big challenge. But to figure out how to make sailing work on television, nobody had ever done it before. Right. And the combination of up in the air and on the water, but the onboard cameras and getting the sailors talking right. to it. You know, I, I, I remember right. those days so well when you were right on the deck. Well, that was that and there's was, the afterguard. You were right there, and you could see people with the. And that strategy. was hard work. I was the guy that sold Dennis Connor and his crew of doing that. that I remember was great. going to see him, and, and and Connor said, "We'll have a vote," and the crew voted 10 to 0, no camera. So I looked at Dennis and said, well, you're the swing vote. And he said, okay, we'll try it for one day and we'll see how it goes. And if we don't like it, we're not doing it again. Well, 
the next thing you know, all these guys are hearing from their girlfriends at home and other old girlfriends and their heroes on yeah, TV. Yeah. And, you know what, we could keep these onboard cameras here. So anyway, that was the start of onboard cameras in the America's Cup and it sure has made a difference that you find out that it's a very strategic, very athletic, very technical event and that makes the America's Cup so compelling. It's awesome. Well, listen, Gary, I really want to thank you again for coming down here to the uh, oh, British Virgin you. Islands, being part of this uh, Chanel Rendezvous, and uh, thanks to Cruising World Magazine for stepping up and sponsoring your visit, and I just want to wish you the best of luck, and uh, I'll see you on the cool. water. All right, Paul, thank you very much. You thank bet. you. Thanks.